Hey guys, this is Mark. In this video, I will demonstrate how aggregate functions work in backendless views. What is an aggregate function? Well, it is an, an instruction that you send to backendless database to perform some kind of calculation on the data located in a specific column with relate with certain conditions. Without conditions, it uh, provides a variety of different options. The example that I will be reviewing today will calculate the number of hobbies a person has. Uh, and the structure of the database is rather simple. Let's take a look at the schema. As you can see, I do have the person table, and then the person has a relationship to a table called hobbies. And then the, that relationship is configured through a column called hobbies, which is one to many connection. As you can see, it, this, it is indicated by this one and uh, designation. So a single person may have multiple hobbies and uh, to pick a an example, let's say Jack, uh, there he has two hobbies, as you can see in the tooltip. It says there are two objects. When you click on it, it uh, displays the hobbies that Jack has. Likewise, all other people also have one or more hobbies related to them. So in the view, what I will want to do is I just want to pull up a list of names from the person table and the number of hobbies through the relation that uh, each of these people has. Let's switch to view and switch to view designer. And in here, uh, it's exactly the same database schema. Uh, that's how Becanvas works. It displays all the same tables that exist in the scope of this view. And I already have name with some transformation. I convert the names to uppercase and the corresponding organization name. So let's add hobbies. To add count for the hobbies, well, count will, will be the actual aggregate function. First of all, we need to add a column from hobbies. That column could be pretty much anything because uh, uh, in the end, we will apply aggregate function. But for simplicity's sake and to make it a little bit more demonstrative, let's pick name. And as you can see right now, out of the box, it will show the combinations between the hobby and the person. So William has three hobbies, then the records are replicated to accommodate all possible uh, combinations. By the way, uh, let's rename this column to hobbies count and apply an aggregate function. Whenever you move mouse over, you get a bunch of different icons. Each icon corresponds to certain functionality that exists in backendless views. The one we're interested in uh, for this video is going to be this icon that allows you to manage aggregation. Click that icon and you get uh, a list, in this case only one, aggregate function. The reason there is only one is because it knows that we're working uh, with strings uh, and with strings the only thing that you can do is count, just count how many there are. If this, uh, if the data type here were to be a number, then you'd be able to do sum, average, minimum, maximum, uh, a bunch of other uh, aggregate functions. But for now, we're interested in count, so let's select count and click save. As you can see here, it calculated the count across all records and rolled it up to the first one with the name William. So this is not correct and this is actually expected for the reason that in order for the count to work we need some kind of grouping we want to group it by name and know how many william has how many jack and uh, and so on and in order to configure this grouping you will need to click this icon that provides a way to do grouping you might ask why did you take out this icon outside of uh, this pop-up well the reason is that you could have multiple aggregate functions in the in your view. However, grouping needs to be done only once. So in here, if we go to uh, configuration for grouping, you can select a column by which you would want to group. Uh, Backendless provides a list of all available columns that exist in this scope, simply because it doesn't really know what you intend to do. What we intend to do is aggregate by name. So this name will be the name from the person table. So if you select name and click save, then this is exactly what we wanted to achieve. We have the name of the person, we have the organization name, and we have number of hobbies that each individual person has. And this is these numbers that we get here. This is the result of the aggregate function at work. Some other thing that you need to keep in mind, if you go to the uh, grouping configuration, you notice that there is a, a field called having. Uh, 
Well, having works sort of as a condition that applies to grouping. So if you want to group uh, only certain names, and in this case names because we have names selected, you can specify this uh, condition right here in uh, the having field. So for instance, uh, let's pick a uh, simple example. For instance, name needs to contain letter A. Uh, and in order to express this with a query language supported by Backendless, we use the keyword like, and then it's going to look like this percent a percent included into single quotes. The percent here is a special character. It means it can match anything before a and anything after a, meaning that the letter a can be anywhere in the name. And then if you click save, notice that we now have fewer uh, uh, records in the result for the reason that it includes only the names that contain letter a. If you remove this, it will go back to the way it was before. And that's pretty much it when it comes to uh, aggregate functions. You can save this view. If you go back to data browser, this is going to be the view. So now if you use API to retrieve data for this view, you'll be getting exactly this data set. Additionally, I'd like to mention that since view is sort of a virtual table, as additional records are added to the person, uh, or hobbies, and then each person may have more or less hobbies, then whenever you run the API, this will be updated dynamically to reflect what the underlying tables contain. And that's a, a subtle but very important feature of views. They are completely dynamic, working with the data that you have in your database. I hope you found this video useful and you will start using aggregate functions in your applications. Thank you for watching this video, and as always, happy coding.